What up, y'all? My name is Jade Fox. This is the Major Looks channel, and I'm coming at you stripped, okay? Because today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. Today I brought my friend Jasmine on um, to have a conversation about confidence, self-expression, identity, but the, the main topic of the conversation is confidence and all the different things in life that it intersects with, relationships, friendships, sense of self, like all this stuff. If you're into it and you wanna watch the entire unedited live version, it is exclusively on my Patreon. This series link up is a Patreon exclusive. I don't really promote my Patreon that much on this channel, um, but if you are interested in supporting the content, all the money from my Patreon goes right back into the content. That's how I'm able to film in a studio. That's how I'm able to you know, afford Adobe subscriptions and like all this other equipment that I need to get to produce my content. So if you are interested in supporting me in that way, I will leave the link to my Patreon in the description. And I just cut up the live stream. Uh, this happened like last week, but I just cut it up to the parts that I think that are most important to this specific audience. Um, so get ready, We're talking about confidence, self-expression, all that good stuff. Thank you once again to Jasmine for coming through one time for the one time. And I hope y'all like this talk. I was like, bitch, we're having a best friend day tomorrow. I'm gonna pick you up, look cute. Yeah and we're just gonna go. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's fun. You're a Libra. I right? really am. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome okay. to um, episode five, I believe episode five, maybe even six of Link Up, the series where I bring my friends along and we have, Siri, I'm not talking to you. <gasps> oh, Siri is... <laughs> oh. Siri always gotta pop in, what? What was that? Uh, we weren't talking about you, bitch. My girl, <laughs> mind your business. Yes, link up, bring my friends on, and we tackle a topic that I feel is on my spirit. And today I brought along the wonderful, the glorious, the beautiful, the amazing Jasmine Jane. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. You you were the first person that came to mind when I wanted to do this because I was like oh. Who is one of the most confident people that I know? And you are within my top three. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. Yeah. I feel like you have like a genuine confidence that is like, it comes from a place of just knowing yourself and knowing your worth. Like, I feel like your self love radiates off of you. And that really does like frame your confidence. I appreciate that. That's um, especially with this past you know, two and a half years. Shit's been Talk hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, I went to a thrift store one time. This is going to connect. I'm going to connect this in a second. Can't wait. I went to a thrift store one time and it was like a vintage thrift store and the homegirl behind the desk like knew her shit. And she was giving us all these like lessons behind like why certain men's like clothes are, uh, are like smaller in the fifties and sixties compared to like other, other eras and stuff. That's cool. And she straight up told us that, you know, when the great depression happened, because a lot of men lost their jobs, mm. um, it affected their egos. It affected, I mean, really it's everybody. T, yeah. It's everybody. <laughs> but during this time, you know, a lot of the men were the heads of the household. They were the only ones bringing in the income. Mm -hmm. And so and when a lot of them lost their jobs, a lot of their ego and their confidence was just hit. Mm -hmm. And then you saw a huge spike in domestic violence. Wow. And so I think it's funny how like economics and things that are happening at, in the world at large can have such a trickle down effect into Completely. the home. It really, um, honestly, stuff like literally what you just said, never, I never like put that stuff together um, until I came out to LA. I originally came out to LA to go to the Fashion Institute downtown. So I went there and I had this class um, in through several classes was uh, trend forecasting. And that's the shit that I was like, I just like trends, obviously you, I've heard the word, like what's trendy, but to actually like look at the 
how like things go on socially and politically connected to like society and celebrity and economics and like what colors are being brought in. Yeah. Like it is wild. Like that, that stuff very much interests me. And it's also very like real time interests me. Like when COVID first happened, the color of the year was literally, it was like an office blue, which <laughs> was like, okay, there was a pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. The color of the year from Pantone was blue, which very hospital. And mm -hmm. also throughout the year was a lot of like police, blue lives matter. And blue was all, it was just like, the marketing so much, for blue, so much the marketing for blue. Going on. And wasn't it like classic blue? Like that was the name of it. It, it was like it classic was like, blue. Exactly. It was that like very corporate blue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> Ugh. people missing work, people being in the hospital, mm -hmm. um, money acting funny because blue, I learned this when I was in college. Look at us mm -hmm. using our, um, mm -hmm. Uh, knowledge in the classroom. Yes. I learned that blue is specifically like that type of blue. Um, it, 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 it evokes feelings of safety, which is why a lot of like mm. banks and hospitals, um, like security, mm -hmm. they use that blue. But let's get into this gig. So listen, I was telling you uh, real at the beginning of this, how, you know, this whole conversation, I want to talk about it because I feel like I realized over the last one or two years that I might have like an unhealthy relationship with my confidence because mm -hmm. the thing about confidence, regardless of like your specific story or your specific journey, like there are people that have just had it and they've just always had it and they've never yeah. lived a day where they haven't had it. Some yeah. people didn't have it. Then they, they grew into it. You know, mm -hmm. um, some people fake it. It is weird. very true. It is what it is. Some days I do, I am all three of those people. <laughs> some days I've had it since I was born and some days I don't even know how to spell it. So <laughs> yeah, some days I just have like oblivious confidence and I don't know where it comes from, but I'm feeling my shit today. Exactly. Um, but I realized that the pandemic, once the pandemic hit, other things started shifting in my life that if I did not feel confident, I completely lost all my sense of self. Okay. Like it was like, wow. if I'm not feeling confident, I don't know. It's almost like I don't know who I am. And I mm -hmm. think that's just because I've always been a confident person and I never, it's never really been challenged ever. Yeah. What, if you don't mind me asking now that you're on my, my uh, show, um, what is, <laughs> um, what is feeling confident for you? Like, it, it, up for some people, it's things other than presentation. Um, so what does that mean to you? I have like a visual in my head of me just walking down the street in an armor bubble. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like there is nothing anyone can say to me to change my mind or to make me feel differently about myself. There's, it's a very much, um, it's not even like a, an aggressive thing. It's just, it's almost like a peaceful state of, yeah. I don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. I am, the way that I'm existing is 100% fine. And I feel good in it. And I prefer yeah. it. Yeah. You know, um, that's how I feel. Yeah. It's very internal, I think. Yeah, that's really, um, what I like about that too is like, you really have to be like tapped in in the moment. Um, that's something personally that I struggle with is like being present mm -hmm. and not like forward thinking or forward fearing about things. So I really like that. That's cool. Well, first of all, have you always been a confident person? Am I completely wrong? And <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> give me the well, spiel. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, okay, so I think this can get a little bit blurry. Like, my family, when I grew up in, like, my small, very white town, my mom's white, my dad's black, um, my, I was raised literally since, like, the womb, I was raised to be a leader. 
now when you think of being a leader, you also think of being confident, right? right. Um, so in that sense, I, I was taught to lead. I was taught that I'm not a follower, that I have my own voice, la, 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 la. So I was confident in, I knew that I was a leader, but I never really, if you were to ask to me like questions about my body or my appearance, I don't think when I was growing up, I would have honestly have known what to say. Whatever mm. it was would have been very surface level. And I wouldn't even have thought about the question. I would just, you know, when you ask someone like, hey, how are you? And you're like, I'm good. Like, even though you're probably not good or maybe you're excellent, you know, right. um, it was very much like that to me. So I, the, the first time I can remember truly feeling confident is about when I was maybe 21 in college. Um, and I went to the mall with my friends and I bought some like zebra. You remember when like LMFAO was the thing and everyone was in like fucking rave gear <laughs> for and no reason for no reason never was i going to a rave and i couldn't shuffle so <laughs> i bought some like zebra print like like glasses like fake glasses and i bought this big like hot pink daisy to put in my hair and i, I was it. like y'all better watch <laughs> out <laughs> and i think that's that's when I started feeling like different and that I truly was feeling it rather than people telling me that I was. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I felt it. Isn't it wild to think about? Cause like there, there comes a point and I think that this normally happens like around high school, going into college. So like what, 17, 18, going into like 19 around that mm -hmm. era, mm -hmm. uh, when you start like crafting what your life is going to be, at least like the very, the very early stages of it. Yeah. Because up until that point, you went to school, your parents told you what pretty much your parents just told you, whatever your parents told you to do is what you did. Yeah. Right. There are not, not many decisions you're making on your own. Yeah. But once you go to college or once you kind of get out of that structure and you start and you have the agency to make what your life is going to look like, mm -hmm. I think that is also around the time when you start considering things like, how do I look? What, yeah. what are my opinions on, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, that's when you maybe you start dating more seriously around that time yeah. too. Yeah. It just becomes more of a thing. Yeah. And it also like, it becomes more of a thing. And then the more you are a part of like minority groups, that's mm -hmm. more like presented to you as well because though i was raised for me personally i was raised in this area that i didn't have the same skin tone as them but i also had like a good enough skin tone to be accepted and my dad was black but he was the nice black guy you know mm -hmm. the, my friends couldn't date black guys but like cam cam's a good guy so do you go to college or I went to college, which was an hour away from Chicago and it was an hour away from my parents. So it was right in that like suburb, way more people, way more black people, way more mm -hmm. just POC everything. And things are like amplified times a thousand when you come from a cornfield, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they weren't different types of overalls over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much do you think your personal style um plays a role in your confidence? And has it always been that way? Now it is the role. <laughs> <laughs> how I present myself, how I feel in mm -hmm. how I present myself, what I put on my body. One million thousand times percent. Um, I don't know if it's always felt as intense as it has in the past like few years because you know, with staying in and uh, uh, like not going out a lot, you mm -hmm. then 
actually go out and now it takes me like 30 more minutes to get dressed because I'm like stepping out of my house for the first time. It's like, I just forgot any yeah. muscle that I use to get ready is gone out yeah. the window. And it's, it's very, it's very trippy right now. <laughs> um, but I think I've always struggled when people, um, when like authority figures, whether I was like on my volleyball team or my parents or schools, I always struggled with being told what I could and could not wear. Mm. So um, I think it's always played a big hand. Like my parents also, like they had me when they were young, um, um, but they were pretty like, uh, hip during that time, you know, like they had really, really dope style. Um, so I also think like it came from them a lot too, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's everything to me. And I understand for a lot of people it is not, but I cannot, I cannot relate. Yeah. There are days where I'm just going to the store. I'm just going to go pick up some deli meat and some bread. <laughs> that is it. And I'm coming yep. straight back. And that's yep. it. I'm going to be gone for 14 minutes. I will get dressed, be like, mm, yep. This isn't it. I have to change. Yep. <laughs> change four <laughs> times to go get some, some ham. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is like, if you're going to, if you see me, period, whether it is online, whether it's here, whether it's on a story, Whatever I'm wearing is intentional. It is there intentionally. I'm in my pajamas intentionally. I'm doing whatever intentionally. I am not going to be caught uncomfortable. That's, yes. That's for damn sure. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if that has to do, has anything to do with, um, because we both went through a big chop, you know? And there are just certain things, especially for queer people, uh, when it comes to presentation, especially when you feel like you present in a way that is aligned and that you agree with, that you love, that you like, I feel like it's really, really hard to step outside and not fully feel that. 1,000%. Mm -hmm. Especially because like, I remember while you were talking about, you know, um, kind of like always towing that line of being just enough for people um, in, in regards to like how you presented and, you know, the way that you worked in school and all that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've always kind of wanted to present masculine, but I've always known where the line was. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I know that I can wear sneakers and jeans every day, but my jeans need to be these kind of jeans, though. They need to be mm -hmm. a little bit slimmer in the in the leg and in the thigh. Yeah. Yeah, You know what I mean? But then I can get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for a long time, my hair was my crutch because it's like, I know I can yeah. get away with everything as long as my hair is long. Because as long as yeah. my hair is long, ain't no confusion. Oh, I'm still girly enough. So many, especially like black um, female born lesbians, literally, um, be so attached to their long hair. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a topic. It is yeah. so interesting to me. Yeah. It is. There's, I I just want studies. Like if there's any scholars out there, <laughs> if you've got some white papers you want to send over, like, and you've done some studies with masked lesbians and their hair, I would love to read it because. Well, I have a question for you and you can ignore this if it's too deep, but whoever you were close with like while being raised and figuring out your sexuality was there any correlation of them approving who you chose to date and what you how you chose to look does that make sense explain it to me i feel like okay what i'm getting at is i feel like very often when i hear about more mask presenting lesbians wanting to keep their long hair it has to do with like if i were to cut it shorter you know like my my grandma's really fucking bothered that i'm gonna look like oh. a boy you know oh. and i can i can wear these jeans and i can wear this shirt but i cannot cut my hair 
because of my mom, my dad, my grandma, la 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 la. So that's where I was getting at. Yes. I feel like I had to come out twice. One, I had to come out as gay, but Mm -hmm. after that I had to come out as mask. Yes. Because it's almost because, well, first of all, I think that a lot of older, not even that much older, just black women, period, and the relationship yeah. with our hair, especially like when we're talking generation to generation, mm-hmm. the way that my grandmother loved to tell me every single time I saw her, oh, that long, pretty hair of yours. <laughs> like, yep. it's it, like, and I think that the way that other people loved my, and my hair was not even, it was not even like, let's <laughs> like all hair is beautiful. Yes. But mine was, it was fine. <laughs> you know, like it yeah. wasn't like, it wasn't that great, but I just think that when you have it and you've got some length on you and it was permed too. And so I yep. kept it nice and bone straight. Yeah. We'll give you a bump on the end. Maybe. <laughs> um, I think just the black women around me just had a lot of pride in my hair. Yeah. And I, and I think that that fueled my desire to want to cut it because it made me feel like in a way it was almost like they were holding on to a version of me that I wanted to let go of and they knew it. Uh, Yeah. I hear it. I feel like I hear it so much, so much when I'm talking to, friends that are just like and you know you have that friend or that person could be an acquaintance and and you meet them and you're just like you know if you cut your hair that would be it like you would be in your final form you would be in your final form and they're just like no I can't you know my Catholic mom and I'm like can't wait (laughs) the thing is it's here here's my thing okay Mm -hmm. If you don't have to depend on these people financially, Agreed. and if you don't live with them, fuck it. And and if you're safe? Yes. Yes. Because the most they're going to do is what? Not like it? Okay. I guarantee you they will get over it. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, then just be, be proud of the fact that you left a lame behind. Yeah. That was weird about not liking your hair. Exactly. If if your relationship is based on a haircut, <laughs> mm-mm. it ain't it. How do you feel when you cut your hair bald? Because I think I mm. met you when you were bald. Yes. Do you ever miss it? First of all, I miss it so much. I miss it so much. I the maintenance love part of shaving it. Shaving my head. Mm. It felt good. It just like it was so even if I had like half an inch of hair, I shaved it off and I was like, oh, my gosh, like, <laughs> absolutely. I miss it for sure. You think you're going to keep growing it out? Or you think or do you think you're going to eventually get the fiend? And, and I wouldn't be surprised if I cut it like I'm 31. I wouldn't be surprised if I cut it close to my 40s. Um, but I'm trying, I want this to be like huge. I feel it. Yeah. I, I want feel it to be it. very big. Same. Yes. I just wanna, when was I want to see you cut your hair. Oh my God. That I got a trim. Long. Thanks friend. Yes. I think I got a trim like a year ago. My gosh. It looks good. Thank you. It, it the fact that it kind of takes it on a different shape and texture the longer it grows yeah. makes me feel like I don't have the same haircut all the time. Yeah. Which, Which is kind of nice. I was going to say, do you like that? I do. I think that's sick. Yeah. Ugh. The fact that you can comfort, like, I have yet to find a hat where I can comfortably put my hair in it and it'll be cute. Like you look it'll be, good. It'll be like a little easy, little easy e moment. You have your little I think curls my, sticking out um, I think my head is just really big too. They're just not all hat people are. Yeah, the same. It's that's okay. True. All right, I'll, let's let's wrap this thing on up. I got one last question, and you can okay. just give me your overall thoughts. <clears throat> okay. Is black and brown 
and or queer confidence political? I'm going to give you a yes and a no in true Libra fashion. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say it is political. The yes is it is political because of how this world is set up and how black and brown and queer and trans and everybody who falls under those categories are not supposed to not supposed to be desired, successful, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say no, because when I think of something, and I could be fucked up in thinking this, so, but when I think of something being political, I think of it being something that can't be normalized. Mm. And... I feel like black and brown queer and trans people deserve to just walk down the fucking street and live. Yeah. You know, um, it shouldn't be like a, a stance, you know, um, that's how I often feel about like body positive stuff. Like mm -hmm. it, it's not, super confident and amazing because I put on a shirt. Um, <laughs> I just put on a shirt, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's political because that's what it's had to be. And black and brown people have grown. Uh, no, not even grown, have risen above beyond that challenge that has been placed on us in America, at least. Um, but yeah, I think, also, it should not be as political as it is, as in we should just be able to, like, walk around and not be judged and not have laws against us. Yep. And, um, yeah. I agree. One thousand trillion times over. Yeah. The thing. <clears throat> so you're in L.A., right? Yeah. So one thing that I appreciated about LA is that it was the only place I've ever lived as a more masked person. Uh, and I never had to, I won't say never had to, but I never thought about how it was going to be perceived. Really? In LA. And so I when I think of like that question, um, it makes me think of spaces where it feels less political and how like freeing that is. Yeah. Um, but also as soon as I leave the bubble, cause LA is very much a bubble. <laughs> cause as soon as you leave the bubble and you don't even got to go that far, to be honest, uh -uh, but as soon as you leave no. the bubble. It drives it, two hours anywhere, any direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you see them flags. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I literally when, um, so for Valentine's day, I rented one of those little getaway tiny cabins. I saw that. How was that? It was so nice, but we had to like drive out and I'm in Oregon and this is where the KKK started. Oh, I did not know that. Fun fact. In so <laughs> we drove like two hours out and I had to go to a general store and it was one of those general stores like the kind mm -hmm. you see in the horror movies where the college kids they pull over and get gas mm -mm. and they like talk to the weird guy behind the desk and he warns them not to go down the street yep yeah i had that energy and instantly i was scared because i looked the way and it wasn't because i looked the way i looked it was because i looked the way i looked where i was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Um, so i think the political part of it really does have to do with geographically yeah. where you are but it i'm lying though because even <laughs> just to bring it back to the conversation we were talking about earlier about like black women specifically and like cutting off the hair or just like mask presenting people and cutting off their hair it's like it is a political thing and you're yeah, and you, and yeah. You, you feel the weight of that uh -huh. you know do you have like any bits of advice, things that you've learned, lessons that you want to bestow on the people in regards to how to navigate their own confidence? 
Yes. Um, I feel like the advice that I would give is be easy on yourself. Um, and not everything has to be done full out in one day, one time, <laughs> you know, um, it can be little baby steps. It can take you five minutes. It can take you five years. Um, yep. there is literally, you don't get a medal. You don't get a sash. You don't, <laughs> you don't get anything, uh, for completing that. So as long as I, I think, I feel like for the last few years, when I do take step back steps backwards in my confidence journey, at first I would be like, oh, bah. Um, and instead of being upset about those, just realizing that those are also new ways to learn, um, just keeps things very much. It's always moving forward, even if it looks backwards. It's moving mm -hmm. forward. Yes, absolutely. Don't any past version of yourself, let them live. Don't mm -hmm. judge them. Mm -hmm. You made the best truly. informed decision you could at the time. And that's just I, what happened. That is the truth. That is the truth. And that's it. Yes. Uh, and any anything that you feel like you're struggling with um, presentation wise, identity wise, whatever the case is, anything that you feel makes up, you know, all of the tears of your life. Uh, just know that like you are becoming more of the person that you are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So if you feel a shift happening, don't, don't fight it. Just let it yep. happen and learn from it. Yep. And you'll be good. Pay your taxes. It's tax season. Oh, oh come on. 